Hey, Jared here from Next Developments, and this is a subdivision update. I'm on site at our subdivision site, so we're taking a single block, quite a big one, and turning it into the existing house on the front, and then nine new blocks at the back. So we're just doing our final bit of compliance for our DA, and that's around geotechnical survey. So we've got a little bit of landslip potential on a couple of our blocks. They've got fantastic views, but they're a little bit steep. And probably the worst of the blocks is the one I'm planning to keep the build on. And so um, as part of the DA process, one of our neighbors kind of raised concerns around the uh, landslip potential. So the council asked us to do geotech. Now we were gonna do it anyway, because you have to do it for the roadway we're putting in because um, they obviously need to know how big the how deep the road has to go but we've kind of been forced to go a little bit further but what I've decided to do is leverage that fact that we're going further get the geotech guys to do uh, all the soil surveys on all the individual blocks at the same time so they're going to do two meter deep holes on each of the blocks just into the subsurface see what the soil makeups like most of our blocks are on natural level anyway so that's fine um, and the one with the one or two with the landslip potential are the best blocks in the subdivision but they're also the ones with sort of the biggest objections for people who want to build on them and they've got fill on them so he's just um, done the first main core you can probably hear the drilling rig up the back behind me and done his first main core he got down to five meters and hit rock hard clay like the drilling rig couldn't actually get into it now it's not a massive rig but it's a soil coring sample type thing and yeah, five meters, it just went, no, nah, not going any further, ridiculously hard clay. So that's pretty good for me because it means when I'm pouring some piles down to tie my foundations to and to tie my overall building to, I don't actually have to go very deep. It'll be really good. So that's a great outcome for me personally, but also for us because it means our landslip potential is lower. So I won't wait and see how they go, but they're going to do about uh, 11 holes here on site today which will be interesting because they quoted for doing less, um, but now that they're on site and they've done the looking around and they're kind of targeted everything, they're gonna do more, but more shallower ones and less of the really deep ones. So that's, that's pretty good. So hopefully swings and roundabouts, it won't be too much dearer than expected. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, the survey, well, the engineering plans, which place all the road in place, are now kind of finalized. We're just making sure everybody's happy with that. Um, they look really good. It's a bit of a compromise between a few different things, but we still get good outcomes on everything and it's going to go together really nicely. Um, yeah, so the next stage, it, once this geotech survey is done, is we provide that to the council. It won't say anything too magical. Um, council will then be okay with that and new engineering draft, new engineering plans will move the road slightly. They'll be happy with that. Everyone will be happy and we'll get our DA approval. Then we'll be going really, really hard on getting our engineer, civil engineer, to run the quoting process and the tender process for our civil works. And we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of civil works here. So we'll be running that tender process parallel with the loan application to finance it. We're not financing a lot of it, but you know, 50, 60% would be nice. Um, you know, obviously finance, you don't have to come up with the same way that cash has to come out of somewhere. So we'll do that, we'll get these equipment on site, we'll get the place, you know, prettied up and roads in and sewers in and stormwater in. And um, yeah, once we have those quotes and that tender process in place, we'll pretty much be a 99% sure on all our costs. Um, the other process we've kind of got to get to is uh, we've got to talk to TAS Networks, which is our power setup. In fact, I have to chase up my civil engineer. He was going to be chasing that up. So we've got to talk to TAS Networks and get them to quote on running the underground power in because it's coming about 150 metres up from the road and then looping around our cul-de-sac. Um, that'll be really cool. I like underground power. No power lines, no power poles, no mess. Just appears. It's really cool. Um, we've got to get NBN to run fibre in. This place is going to be proper NBN for all you mainland people who get crappy NBN proper fiber to the home fantastic stuff a little bit future proof no copper involved so that'll be good and they're the only other two people involved our civil works guys will do the rest we'll know everything um that's when we really know whether we can go ahead make money everything else but as as i've kind of mentioned in a couple of videos before the market's moving with us which is really cool um things are selling really fast there's lots of demand there's no land in this suburb for sale 
Um, there's a little bit closer in, but it's down in the dark, in this dark little valley, and it's not that great. Up here, you got, you can see the sunshine behind me. This is a beautiful sort of winter morning, or autumn morning technically, and it's just gorgeous here. So you got lots of sunshine, beautiful outlook. I mean, we like it because you can put solar panels on the roof and, you know, have a nice sort of passive, passive solar design. Yeah, it's going to be a great location. And I think once the road's in, the place is pretty and people can kind of just walk in and see a driveway into an empty block and put their house there in their mind. It'll actually work really well. Yeah, so I'm pretty positive about our, um, our price outcome. It's certainly every time I assess what's around in the market and where we position, our, what I expect from our blocks actually goes up a little bit each time. Um, yeah, it's looking really good. I mean, some of our costs have come in higher. Obviously, we've spent a bit more on geotech because we've had to pay to have all the blocks done as well as just the roadway, which we originally did, so that doubled our cost. But we can pass that cost on to the home, home to the block buyers because we hand them the full report that they need to hand to their architect for soil. So that costs us a little bit extra, but... You know, I think a soil report on a block you're purchasing is going to allow us to negotiate better because people won't have that, we, we can't buy this because we don't know, that unknown element. Whereas they can just hand the soil report to their architect, their architect can do up some concepts and off they go. Anyway, that's where we're up to today. I'm really kind of stoked to be getting these guys on site and the last little hurdle for our DA. Hopefully next time we're talking, I'll be telling you about how the DA is all finished. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, chat subscribe con comment in um, youtube make sure you subscribe in youtube you see the new videos coming up i put most of them on the facebook page but not necessarily all of them yeah but you got any questions feel free to ask happy to help uh talk to any of you who want to talk to me cheers